the uh, Grozeal Commerce Park Commission to order at six o'clock. The uh, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Hornby, would you lead us in a pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is roll call. Mr. Moran is here. Mr. Rathel. Here. Mr. Manns. Here. Mr. Falarski is excused. Mr. Hornby. Here. Mr. Tanova. Here. And Mr. Porcerelli is excused. Uh, next item on the agenda is, is there any additions or deletions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Mr. Rathel, supported by Mr. Manns to approve the agenda as submitted. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Next item is the approval of the minutes of the March 21, 2022 meeting. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to review that. So moved. Motion by Mr. Manns. Or by Mr. Tanova. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Next item is the financial report for March 2022. Everyone should have in their package uh, the financial report and um, our revenue projected uh, budget for the year is $978,581. Our current year to date revenue is $1,076,326, which is 110% of our budget. And our expenditures are budgeted at $978,581 and our year-to-date expenditures and encumbrances is $1,056,570, which is 108% of our budgeted expenditures. Um, our capital reserves as of March 21, 22 is $440,560. And our past due rent summary as of April 14th is $27,009. With that, um, Janelle, is there anything you want to point out on the financial report? Not at this moment, no. Does anyone have any comments or questions on the March financial report? I do. Mr. Hornby. happening at the fuel farm uh, whether we have some sort of uh, uh, bad inventory adjustments or readings or whether we have uh, really a loss you know when you look at uh, um, purchases versus versus receipts or revenues so we talked about looking into it to see how we're pricing things and you know maybe there's a purchase that carried over from the prior year or something but it uh, you know it appears uh, <clears throat> it needs looked at to me and I'm not sure I understand what's going on you know I know we did talk about this at the last meeting um, do you have any update I do not no nope. mm -mm. mr. Manns a month ago yeah. so our next purchase is obviously going to be quite a bit higher well the next purchase will be quite a bit higher as well, far as I mean fuel is obviously up so that <laughs> next purchase of inventory will be more than our current average the cost per gallon. Cost, cost per gallon. Per if it's gallon. a dollar, it's going to be yes. a dollar whatever. Yes. So it's going up. It's going up. Gotcha. And do we average that out? Does it get averaged into the amount of inventory? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Janelle, why don't you put that as a discussion item at our next meeting, Fuel Farm. Is there any other comments or questions on the finance report? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, receive and file. Or and a motion by Mr. Manns, is there support? So moved, I should say. Ordered by Mr. Tenova. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Next item is our manager's report, runway, runway four tree obstruction update. Janelle? So I'm gonna come up here. Our uh, computers aren't on here, Janelle, the screens, so we can't see what you're showing. Well, because I don't, I'm turn the green light on. Do, 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 do. I don't know how to use this. Oh, we're getting some assistance. Are your screens on over there? Yes. Yep. Yeah. are above they're pro we're guessing probably about 50 feet high but they're probably fast growing trees but we compared it to the Google Earth map um, and because of these obstructions there's no nighttime landing on four right now so the FAA has come in and said we can no longer have nighttime landing on runway four so I spoke with, because this is the Yacht Club, so I spoke to the Yacht Club late last week, and we're under the assumption they're not very wide trees, being that that was just all completely taken down to earth back in 2006. And we're going to actually, they're going to let us borrow their barge to go over there and physically look at the tree and see what we're working with so we can possibly get them cut down here in the next month. But I talked to Jason, their chair over there. He didn't seem to think it was gonna be that big of an issue based on where he thinks the trees are to get them cut down. So he believes that the maintenance staff here at the airport should be able to cut them down with no problem. That's his belief. And what yacht club? Ford Yacht Club. Mm -hmm. And when you say cut down, you're talking completely cut down or just trimmed down to a certain height? What the agreement between the Gross Seal Airport and the Yacht Club states that it has to be completely taken down. We can't just top it. And refresh my memory, this agreement that... Was when Round Island had lots of trees back in 2006. And we, well, I don't know if they, they, we have an easement on their property to go and cut the trees down at any time that we want. So, but it's our responsibility from the agreement that was written in 2006 to cut those trees down. You guesstimated these are like 50 feet tall, did you say? That is kind of what it looks like from the Google Earth map. And but how many is there? I have no idea. They're like clusters of trees. So they could just be, you know, I don't know. I mean, they're however old. What is it, 2022? So I don't know how many trees there are until I go out and look at them. 
So the idea is to hop on their barge, go and look at it, observe the trees, and figure out what the next plan of action is going to be. And when is the when is that going to take place? When are you going on the barge? This week, sometime I think. I don't have a date set in stone. I was going to call him tomorrow or Wednesday. Now, who told you that it was the airport's responsibility to cut those down? Jason, the chair over at the Ford Yacht Club. So Jason, the chair, is knowledgeable in this and he's... There was, there was a resolution that was shown to me from him, from Dale Ream, back dated from 2005. I tried to find that was I tried to find some sort of documentation that was signed by both the Grosseal Airport and the Yacht Club. I haven't come across anything as of yet. So did Jason have anything or he didn't have? He didn't. He did have. He did have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if we can't find it, can we have him give us a, make a copy for us? I'm not sure what resolution that is because the FAA paid the Ford Yacht Club $100,000 to go over there and cut the trees down, and we didn't do anything. <clears throat> so it wasn't our responsibility to go cut trees down in Round Island. The FAA did that, and like I said, paid for the Ford Yacht Club for it. So I would be surprised, and more than surprised, that there's a document floating around that said we would be, the airport would be in charge of cutting future trees down in perpetuity on Round Island. That doesn't make any sense to me. We'll get a document. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, get a, we'll get a document over and... I think the, the document has to come from, from the township. You know, where if there is a document that he has from the Grozeal Airport, which doesn't make sense with the Ford Yacht Club, it would be in our possession. It would be in the airport office somewhere. Seems to me that that document should be signed by the Grosseal Airport and the Ford Yacht Club. Well, I mean, the, the, well, the, yeah, in the FAA. Did, would, did the FAA sign anything? Do you remember, John? Well, I'm not. Yeah, they signed a check for $100,000 to pay the Ford Yacht Club. <laughs> I know, but I'm looking so, <laughs> at like a document. Um, but to, so. to have, to, to have a, a, a contract that saddles the airport in perpetuity to cut down the trees on Round Island makes no sense to me. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I can't, it just, it just, I don't understand that at all. So maybe he has some kind of understanding, um, but it's their property. And like I said, the airspace above it uh, was basically purchased, you know, where these trees can be cut down. But Correct. I can't imagine that the airport said, okay, well, in the future, we'll just cut them all down. You know, we'll handle that. Well, we'll have to look into it. I can tell you, looking at those trees right there, you, we cut down 800 in that circle, inside of that and circle. this circle here. Right. I would say that there's probably going to be 100 trees at least there. Where they got to go? They're all, all of them. All of them. But these ones? Oh, they're going to grow. You got to go. Yeah. So, but we're going to have to figure something out. Pretty important. Well, yeah, but, you know, I mean, we can cut down all the trees, you know, if we want. We just spend our own money and go cut down every every tree on everyone else's property. Well, oh, right now we're just doing the investigation. I mean, they're cooperating. <clears throat> they're going to let us just go and take a look at it, and then we'll cross the next bridge when we get to it. The drawing that's on the screen, where did that come from? Um, that and the, FA, the FAA. Yeah. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. So I know you talked to Mike, you know, we're, we're in the investigation right now and it's the first time we're all seeing this, but the runway is closed, you know, to precision landings at night. So obviously this has been talked about to somebody for a long time for the FAA to come in and shut the runway down without giving us 
or you know having conversations of, of rectifying something before they just shut it right well it looked like there was an email that went out in September that said hey we have a you know this tree issue and then prior to that there was an email that went out like in 2019 and there was a reference of prior emails of these trees being growing the only thing that we were ever notified of was the Phragmites, which look like they're there as well in there. And then, um, and then the trees, uh, the trees that were on our property and private property that we just spent, what, time. how much, how many, $28,000 or something we just mm -hmm. spent to cut down trees? Well, this email went out as well a little while ago. I had this email and then the feds just came back because I had been giving MDOT update with the tree removal as well. So which was involved. So my understanding is with the tree removal down on 2-2 was I was notifying MDOT and it was to my understanding my contact at MDOT was notifying the FAA. And so I got an email, I don't know, a couple weeks ago that said we have these trees what are we doing about them? What is your plan? So he said, I don't have any choice, but I have to put a, a note amount. So it's going to be a lot of money. I mean, we can spend it, which just takes away from other stuff. So, I mean, it's, if we're not going to, you know, we're not going to, I mean, it's for, we didn't pay for the trees in the first place to get cut down. Um, and that, you know, that ended up, being paid for, like I said, the FAA to, to clear that out, but it seems like the Ford Yacht Club is saying you guys are responsible. It seems like MDOT saying you're responsible, FAA. So I can tell you right now, right? I don't want another hundred pilots in this room screaming and yelling and complaining that we don't care about safety and blah, 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 like it did. And that changed literally everything on this airport. <clears throat> changed the commission structure and everything. It was just a mess. We want to spend the money, cost eighty, hundred thousand dollars to cut those down. Okay. You want to know something? I don't want to talk about it. I don't. We, we just, we just don't do other stuff. I mean, it's. Well, I, I would say let's just take a look at it. We'll look at, we'll investigate a little bit more and see who truly is responsible. It sounds. You got to come down. Well, they do have to come down, but at what cost, right? So I think well, that's what we're trying it's to. Look at. They, do, they don't. They don't have to come down. That's well, that's I don't the know. Thing. I'm not a pilot. They, so. they they don't have to come down, right? And and trees are going to be a major issue in the next year or two, because these trees are nothing compared to what is on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay, stretching from the end of our runway now, well not quite because you just you just cut down those, all the way to East River Road, I think north of Bellevue, right on that flight path. All those trees in there, there's hundreds and hundreds of large oak, 100-year-old trees, heritage trees, small trees, but all in people's yards and everything that they're saying are a problem, right? They are. Mm -hmm. It's a problem with the length of the runway now. It's a problem with what we have as far as our, our ability to use the full length of the runway. You start shortening the runways, you start displacing it, you start moving it in, and those trees aren't a problem because the slope changes. Correct. So these are going to be major conversations of angry people of this airport and this township deciding whether or not we're going to spend 100000 dollars probably hundreds of thousands of dollars, going on people's property to try to trim trees and cut trees down true but we're just talking about these right now but no we're not well well we there's a, there, he's bringing up something I, that I is it. a whole I, I understand the concept but but, but if we're you talking look, about these right now but we're not because if you look at this right here this if you look at the full length of the runway those trees are I, there right now I get on it. the same report do we know why the faa paid for it back 15 years ago because they wanted to have the runway we just we're redoing the runway we're using eliminating the displacements 
And um, to do that, they, uh, they needed those trees gone instead of moving a runway in. So was there, was that part of the grant money that went towards it or was it a separate, do you remember? As far as the runway grant money, this was a separate. Separate? Yeah. The concrete length has always been the same, but we've had displacements. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the land between the end of the runway and Gibraltar Bay, that safety overrun, okay, um, is just the right amount of safety overrun needed for the length of the runway that we have now. Before, the runway, usable runway length was less than what it is now. Even though the concrete was the same length, but it was it was less usable because it was displaced. Now we have the full length of the runway that we could use because we cut down all those trees and we were able to have our approach. But now they're saying that those trees have grown back again in a short period of time. I mean, it's a, it's just going to be a never-ending battle with this with this. So we got to decide, do we want to keep cutting down trees oh. on, on both sides or have a runway length that is capable of ha having trees on both sides? You know, can you investigate the agreement? Well, that... we're going to investigate it again. We're going to wrap back around. This is just the be very beginning. So we'll be wrapping back around. And can you um, talk to CNS and FAA and MDOT to see if there, if we have that responsibility, if there's funding available? And that, so that runway is closed until this gets resolved? Well, only nighttime. It's not closed, closed. Yeah, that's on you. Okay. Mr. Chair. Um, okay. No, but. Now, is there a way uh, for someone to land at night uh, currently with this runway shut down? With the – help me out here, Jack. It's just the IFRs, right? So the inst it's just the instrument approach. So if you're a visual approach, then I believe you can land there. Is that correct, Jack? So I'm just looking at it from an emergency standpoint, if, there, if there's an emergency right now. Or if we have, I know we don't have many life flights coming into Grozio, but if we have a life flight and these trees are holding that up, I, I wouldn't, I think we should figure this out sooner than, than later. Um, that's kind of my Runway's 5,000 feet, right? No, it's under. Under, a little under? You can land there at night. You just can't use the precision approach. So your VFR, you can land and take off all you want. but And I'm not sure how many precision apply. I, I talked to Jim Daly about it two days ago, and he said, really? I didn't know it was closed. And he's so he's got the, the plotus over there, you know. That well, it's got to be safe, so we got to do what's right. Whatever that is, do our homework. Okay, Janelle, you'll... Uh... So to answer to the answer to the question, just a little bit more, <clears throat> if I could talk to CNS about it. So I actually have a meeting with CNS tomorrow. As is, and um, it's MDOT, because I had questions about this new bill funding grant money, that it didn't really seem like even parties at MDOT didn't fully understand it. And... Um, there's a, I have a meeting with them to discuss these things for the new bill funding that's coming out and runway 1735 and then the tree obstructions on 422. So I'm, that's part of my homework tomorrow for to get more details on it. So it's just the very beginning of it. Okay, you'll let us know what you find out. Hearing none, we'll move on to our action items. Uh, action item number one is the approval of the Media Connection Marketing Group lease. We have a resolution uh, in front of us that reads, based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby approves a lease between Media Connection Marketing Group and the Grozeal Municipal Airport 
formal lease will be developed pending approval of the commission. Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of this resolution. And that reads, this, res this resolution is a lease approval for an office space on the south side of Hangar 2. Total amount of the lease is 228 square feet. Media connection marketing group will be utilizing this office space. Um, the date of the lease is April 1, 2022 through March 31st, 2023. It is for uh, $13.16 a square foot per year. There will be a deposit of $250 required. So moved. Motion by Mr. Manns. Or, or by Mr. Tenover. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Action item number two is the approval of Kathleen Lawler lease. We have a resolution in front of us that reads based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park manager. The Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby approves a lease between Kathleen Lawler and the Grozeal Municipal Airport. A formal lease will be developed pending approval by the commission. Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of this resolution, which reads, this resolution is a lease approval for office space on the south side of Hangar 2. Total amount of the lease is 324 square feet. Kathleen Lauer will be used, utilizing this space as office space. Lease commencement date is May 1, 2022, with an expiration of April 30th, 2023. And it, uh, the lease is for $14.04 a square foot, um, which equals $388 a month. Salute. Motion by Mr. Tanova. Support. Support by Mr. Hornby. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number, action item number three is the uh, approval of Allied Engineering Solutions lease. And we have a resolution before us that reads, based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission, hereby approves a lease between Allied Engineering Solutions and the Grozeal Air Municipal Airport Formal lease will be developed pending approval by the commission. Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of this resolution. And that reads, this resolution is a lease approval for office space on the south side of Hangar 2. Total lease square footage is 180 square feet. Allied Engineering Solutions will be utilizing this office, this space as office space. Commencement date is May 1, 2022, with the expiration of April 30th, 2023. The base uh, expense for the uh, square footage is $14.40 a square foot, which equals $216 a month. So moved. Motion by Mr. Manns. Support. Supported by Mr. Tenover. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> any comments, any questions? Hearing none, we have a motion by Mr. Mann, supported by Mr. Tanova. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Action item number four is the approval of pictured, pictured in motion lease. We have a resolution in front of us that reads based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby approves a lease between Pictures in motion in the Grozeal Municipal Airport. A formal lease will be developed pending approval by the commission. Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of this resolution. And that reads, this resolution is a renewal of the lease for office space on the south side of Hangar 2. Total square footage is 421 square feet. Pictures in motion will be utilizing this space as office space. Commencement date is May 1, 2022, with the expiration of April 30th, 2023. The amount of the lease is for $14.40 a square foot. 
which equals $504 a month. Hello. A motion by Mr. Tanova. Or, or by Mr. Mays. There any further discussion? <coughs> to the lease renewal it's a tenant that's been um, leasing space for a number of years from us. There's no other comments or questions. We've got a motion by Mr. Tanova, supported by Mr. Manns. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Action item number five is the approval of rental of for hangar one for the annual car show and we have a resolution in front of us that reads we are approving the use of hangar one for the sibley century car show on august 20th 2022 and the history on this is the sibley century hosted this event last year discovering a firm interest in the community for such an event this event will be a charitable event and the proceeds will be donated to various community organization as a result of last year's success they will be expanding this space as follows uh, the date of the car show will be august 20th um, the entire what they need is the entire 40,000 square feet of the hangar um, parking will be identified and confirmed to accommodate the public and that there will be a designated area for the yankee air museum and they're seeking permission to allow food vendors. Mr. Manns. And we um, ask where some of the proceeds will be sent to the charities. Like, I'd like maybe NAS to get a little love. Janelle, do you happen to know where they donated in the past? No. He's, well, maybe we can. We could make a recommendation. Yeah. So the. the the process up until now has been that any activity that comes and uses the facility because of its historic relevance, to use the background historically of the hangar, memorial gardens, the, the, the things that represent our honoring of our men and women that served at this base, are required to fund the NAS Grozeal Memorial Fund, which puts back into the facility to continue to memorialize our veterans there's a couple ways to do it uh, one way is better than the other I'll let you have that, one. that if they want to use the 40,000 square foot hangar we charge them a, a, a certain amount whatever that is and then that money goes into the NAS memorial fund the other that doesn't work out as well because there's different charities that say, well, we didn't make as much as we thought we were gonna make, we gotta do this charity, we gotta do that charity, and then they throw a couple bucks just to appease the situation. So, um, this is a great event. I mean, it really is, a, it's, it's expanding. The Yankee Air Museum is gonna be here, um, but it's a car show, right? It's like a group that wants to use our facility for a car show and what they do with the money is I mean it's up to them I mean they're just saying that they want to donate it to charities which is great but I'd like to streamline that towards our charity so um, it's up to you guys I mean left up to me I would say listen you guys want to have the whole hangar you want to have the ramp you want to have food you want to have everything we're going to charge you 3,000 bucks to use the hangar well, it's it's for a wedding. It's three thousand bucks, thirty five hundred bucks. Thirty five hundred dollars for a twenty four hour use. Of okay. Well, so whatever the going rate is. Um, and then that money, you know, has go, goes into the into the fund. Um, Do we have any idea what kind of money they donated to charity charitable events last year? No. I don't even know if if it was. If it was set up that way, I, I, what I, last I, year? To. Yeah, if it was set up through the NAS last no, year. No, if or? it was set up the way they, I'm talking about the way they set it up. Sure. Did, they, did their proceeds go to charitable? Um, I don't know if it yeah. did. And that's cool, but we could say X amount's going to go here, right? We can say whatever we want. They they want to use our entire airport base, the hangar. That's what I'm saying. So. I mean, I think that I think that we we it's a great event for sure. It's a great event. 
and this is, this year is going to be great as well. Um, but beneficial. there is there is a cost and expense to the airport as well because we've got to get all the planes out of the hangar. We've got to contact all the people there. They're going to use our resources. Our maintenance guys are going to have so to be here. So we got to net that out and figure out what that is, less the. Right. I would recommend that we approve the, the use of Hangar 1 subject to a donation of whatever we want that amount to be. So it's got to be a Looking day. Looking out for it's, you, Rachel. Yeah, it's got to be a day event. Not for me. It's for our veterans. <laughs> and you. <laughs> Both. All right, what do you think, Janelle? Well, if it's a day event and we charge 24, hour, or 20, 24 hours for 3500 this is one day. So eight hours, half of that, then what's half of that, right? 2250 I mean, I don't know. I'm just say $3,000 and but see what they say. I think Ron's right. We can approve it and then figure out the but I'd like monetary. that to be part of the motion. Though. Yeah, I mean, we, we, have to, to, we have to nail this down. We well, can't yeah. do that. Then so nail it down. What do you want to do? It's up to you, Jen. how much they made last year because... Well, I think if we we determine an amount and and it's not feasible for them, they'll let us know. Yeah. They'll push back. Well, I, it's it's apples and oranges because they're having the Yankee Air Force now. They're having food. They're having a whole ham. It's a, a lot bigger event this year. What about a percentage donation? So if if it gets bigger than they expected, it's better for us. The problem with that is, is that you know it's now we have to, we have to kind of you know, you have to audit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, audit the. Oh, yeah. staff. So I, 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 I would. Here's what I would propose, and it's a, it's a, um, it's a compromise on my part. I would say. They can use the facility. $2,500, the airport would take $1,000 to cover your cost, and then $1,500 goes into the NA, NAS uh, Memorial Fund. Love it. And then that's a compromise on our, our normal rate for the hangar. You, Janelle, are not going to lose any money because you'll get a thousand dollars to cover all the maintenance guys for the day and, and all your time and everything of our FBOs pulling out the plane, and then there would be a fifteen hundred dollar donation. Um, and even if they said, you know what, hey, we're going to make a lot more than that, you know, just say then, you know, we're happy with that. You guys go do your charitable do donations elsewhere. We're we're happy with twenty five hundred bucks, and we're here to support you. Is that by way of a motion, Mr. Rathel? Support that. A motion by Mr. Rathel, support by Mr. Mayans to approve the use of Hangar 1 for the Sibley Century Car Show on August 20th, 2022, um, with the amount of $1,000 being um, contributed to uh, handle the expense of the airport for the use of the hangar. An additional $1,500 uh, be donated to the <coughs> NAS fund. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Action item number six is the to approve Downriver Cleaning Services to clean offices located at 9510 Grow Road, which is building 6162 in the amount not to exceed $5,000. So moved. Support. Motion by Mr. Rathel, supported by Mr. Tanova. Any discussion? Must be a real dump. No. Five grand? Up to, not to exceed. There, there's. I'm, I've not been in there. Some mold so. issues oh, that we need to re deal. Remediation issues? Yeah. The only thing that I would say, and I'm in favor of this, and it doesn't look like we're going to be leasing it uh, out. Um, is that we have to clean it and secure it so this doesn't happen again. If we spend, say we spend $5,000,
and we clean everything and then another year from now we're in the same situation this that's not good so there has to be a plan on what is going to happen in this facility so that it doesn't happen again is a roof windows everything that caused this in the first place is that going to be um, addressed or has it been addressed where we can keep a, and maintain a, a dry environment I think so Janelle right but I mean all the all the buildings have a daily check everyone so if there is you know let's just say like a leak that starts we're gonna catch it at the beginning but it has that roof has been um, examined by a roofing company so it's been sealed Comments or questions? We have a motion by Mr. Rathel, supported by Mr. Tanova. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Next item is subcommittee reports. We have none. Um, there is no closed session. Next uh, item is chairman's report. And just wanted to report that um, I've met with Brandon over at Pirates Cove and he does appear to be uh, acceptance of him installing our the wall that's part of our landscape plan on the east side of Midway. And I also met with um, Matt Scott uh, two Saturdays ago and he's given me um, some pricing to do the landscaping around the wall per the uh, plan that was done our master plan that was done a couple years ago so um, I still need to follow up with Brandon find out the timing of when that wall is going to be done and then we can schedule uh, approval of the landscaping uh, with Scott landscaping and get that done once the wall is installed I also um, looked at the entryway into hangar one um, we have a landscape plan for that as well, and uh, Scott's Landscaping gave me a proposal to Here? do that. Uh, no, two. two I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, all right, Ron, good job. <laughs> no, hanger two uh, to kind of dress up where we improve the yeah. uh, asphalt, you know, entrance into that. So um, I'll be bringing that back to this uh, board at our next meeting for approval. Did Brandon send you the artwork for the medallions? He was he, supposed to. Yeah, he he did. He he sent an elevation drawing that has a couple that they want to put on the open spaces, and then they're looking for us to give them some suggestions. I think two or three locations. Janelle and I talked about it on Friday, and we just need to get together and come up with, you know, a couple things to put in there. They actually just dropped off. There's right a print up. too. A, a print for the medallions. Mm -hmm. Up. What it? What is it? Is it? Uh, you don't. Is it? Yeah, like, should, like an airplane or? Uh, it's like airplane. There's a bi wing. There's an anchor. There's a treasure I think they have tre a pirate's cove tre treasure emblem. chest. I have it. It was in my mailbox. Yeah, I, I think that's the same thing that he emailed to us. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we can figure that out in the next couple of weeks. That's all I had to report. Um, we will move on to public comment. Hello, Jack Ganey, 26049 Dreshfield. I'm a uh, pilot and a uh, renter of one of the hangars here at Grozio, the T-Hangers. Um, the only comment or question I have is, um, at some time, uh, Janelle or if the board here, um, you'd sent out a letter about the uh, increased uh, hangar rate, but also about requiring insurance. I'd just like to ask uh, if at uh, some way you can make a clarification on what the requirement for that insurance is. Seems to be some confusion. Um, I'm also a member of the AAC. Some other pilots have approached me. I'm not quite sure what to advise them on. So if the board could give that some consideration and provide some guidance to the pilots and renters, I think that would be appreciated. Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, that would be, we need to tell them what kind of insurance and, and what the insurance amount is. So 
Uh, I don't know if we need to get with uh, legal counsel, the township's legal counsel on that tonight. We do need to get with the legal okay. counsel. I, le I did leave a message for legal counsel today. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just with with the date of renewal on there, et cetera, there seems to be you know uh, some considerable consternation on what needs to be done to met that obligation, et cetera. So any illumination would be probably appreciated. I know myself, I, you know, talk with some, you know, my insurers, et cetera. And again, I, I wind up with more questions than answers. So would appreciate any help that you can give on this. Sure, we will, we'll get that to you here in the next, okay. hopefully next week or so. Thank you. Thanks. Is there any open business? Anyone have any open business they'd like to discuss? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Manns, supported by Mr. Tanova, to adjourn at 647. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries.